at the time I was, you know, it was pretty public, it was humiliating, but it was also mean. And when I, if anybody believed what they read about me, I was not going to get a job. And when you're going through it, you're the only one now. You don't think anybody, you're thinking of you and you're saying, if anybody reads this, I'll never work again. If anybody believes this, I should say, what they're reading, I'm not going to work. So you have the anxiety. I mean, I went from Coach Cal, you lose your identity. I went from Coach Cal to Cal. I went from, can we have a picture? Sure. To, can we have a picture? Oh, oh give me the camera. Now I'm taking it. I went from having people around me, working with me, having dinners together to, wait a minute, you know, I'm, this is me. And I had to step back and say, what do I really want to do? Uh, that's when Coach Brown threw me a life raft, come down here in Philadelphia. I said, what do you want me to scout or what, you know what? I want you on the bench with me. I need you. He didn't need me. He knew I needed him. I went down for a year, the best year of my life. It recharged me. It got me to know that the things I was doing that I learned from him were okay. They still work. So the way you coach and what you're doing is good. You can get back to where you were. Because at the time, when you get knocked down and your world gets rocked, you don't think you can get back to where you were. Oh, you can. If you were there once, why can't you get back there again? But you a lot of times need someone to nudge you. A lot of it's staying positive, but you need someone to push you in that way. And he not only believed in me, he defended me. I'll give you an example of what he did. He's crazy. We're playing the Nets. My first time back in the building, now I'm an assistant. He gets thrown out in the first quarter, and I know he did it on purpose, and today he said he didn't. And another one, and he's gone! Larry Brown just got two technicals here in the first quarter and thrown out by Mark Davis. So I could coach the 76ers against my old team that fired me, and were still paying me. They were paying me still. He's going to get his money's worth right now with a couple of parting shots. And uh, does that give John Calipari an opportunity to coach against his former team? Uh-oh. <laughs> it wasn't no. calculated, perhaps. Larry Brown, I wouldn't put it past him. And we beat the Nets. And they paid me to beat the Nets, which drove everybody crazy. The players gave me the game ball. I can still see Eric Snow and George Lynch, like, hugging me. And here, we're giving you the game ball, Cal. And the Nets came in and grabbed it and said, that's our ball, there's no game ball. It was the greatest moment of showing the nastiness and the pettiness of all the whole, what I went through, knowing it was real. Because you start thinking you're paranoid. I'll give you a paranoid one. You get fired, you're down and out, something happens, they write something about you, go to dinner. The guy next to you, you can see he's talking to his wife, talking about you, and you get mad. That yeah, no good talking about me. I should go over there. And he comes over and taps me on the way out. He says, you should have never been fired. Those people are crazy. I'll never go to a Nets game again. But here's what you learn when you're going through things. You think everybody's worrying about you. They're not. They got their own problems. You're not even in their mindset. So your problem, which could be major for a day, doesn't matter. The coaches I respect in this profession have been through it. You've been fired or you've had the media converge on you to try to make you out to be this worst. I respect, it's kind of like going through elections. You go through the election and you make it and they, all of a sudden they try to beat you down and it doesn't work. And they try to beat you, it doesn't work. Those are the guys I respect. It's not the guys that have gotten a great job and they win because they're at the place of the, that's okay. It's not that I disrespect them, I, but I like to see that guy who's been through it. Chuck Daly said, until you get fired, you're not a coach. Until you really get fired, you're not a coach. There were some people that called me from Memphis to say, would you have an interest in this job? And I, I didn't know enough about it. But I said, you know, I might. I'm at, in the Philadelphia 76ers as an assistant at the time. R.C. Johnson calls me and says, let me ask you, Cal, would you have an interest in this job? You know, I know you from your days at UMass. We were competitors, but... I liked how you did your job, I liked how you handled yourself, I liked how you approached the competition and I love how your players played and how they handled themselves. We meet in Atlanta with the president, Lane Rollins at the time, and on a napkin we do the, what the contract would be, on a little napkin.
The dribble drive motion was brought to me by Vance Wahlberg, a junior college coach at the time at Long Beach City College in Long Beach, California. He came to watch us practice. I took him to dinner. I said, tell me about your offense. He says, you don't want to know. I said, yeah, I do. Tell me. He showed it to me. I said, you're crazy. You don't play this way. We watched tapes. He played this way. I said, you know, I wish I could do, you know, I'm in the middle of practice now. I mean, we're pra it's not like I have prepared. He said, if you run just this for your point guard, you watch what happens. My point guard at the time was Antonio Burks. I put the offense in for him. So we'd run all our stuff, and when Antonio Burks got the ball, it was on. Guess what? He was the MVP of our league and was drafted by the Memphis Grizzlies. I said to myself, self, I may want to do this for more than one guy. And so I went out and said, I want to recruit a certain type of player. They got to be unselfish. They got to have good hearts because they got to be great teammates because I trust them more. Instead of holding 10 strings, I heard I hold six. So I got to trust these people. If I don't trust them, they can't be on my team. But they got to be players. If you cannot ball, you cannot come and play for us. Bottom line. If you're a big guy, if you just want to be a lug screen or post, then you don't come here. If you want to be an agile big guy that can play inside and out, that we can put in pick and rolls, who can shoot some threes and drive, you want to come here. Everything is based on the drive versus the pass. It's Princeton on steroids. And I know I'm not supposed to say it. You're not supposed to say Princeton. You're from the wrong side of the tracks. You don't say Yale or Princeton. Good crossover dribble. Takes off this time and he's... When I went to it fully, we won more games than any program in the history of our sport over four years. And I got the Kentucky job. I <laughs> said, so hopefully the change was good. We went from a program that wasn't graduating anybody, wasn't having fans at games, um, almost like <sighs> to a program that was one of the top five in the country. What I can tell you is, we gathered a lot of people, and those people built a program that we're all proud of. Kids graduated. All in all, they stayed out of trouble. And let me say this. One, I sleep with a clear conscience and feel good about everything we've done there. But kids do stupid things. They do dumb things, like our own children. I've said to my own daughter, where did you come from? You did not come from me. I say that to my son. Who are you? When they screw up, and my children do, I do not throw them under the bus because they did not embarrass me. They embarrassed themselves. I'm not going to say you embarrass me so you're out of here. I'll never do that. My job is to get them to change like Jeremy Hunt had to change. I had to throw Jeremy Hunt off the team for a year and he even said I wouldn't have him back. He begs me to come back. I meet with the president. She's like, what? I thought we were never going to do this. Now we're having him back? I let him back because he got his degree and he had changed. He played well for us and now is playing professionally. He has his college degree and is a changed man. That's our job. I got grief. Doing what's right isn't always popular. And doing what's popular, you embarrass me, you're out of here, isn't always right. These universities will go on for the next hundred years. How we deal with one human being will be a blip on the screen 50 years from now. But in their life, it matters. Compassion, go the extra yard. If there has to be an intervention, there has to be. But let's not throw them under the bus at the first sign. I've, all, I've never changed that, whether I was at Massachusetts, Memphis, or here, and I won't change. So when someone here does something dumb, and I work with them to change, and you say, he'll do anything to win a game. It is not about winning a game. It's about winning their life. And I will not change in how I deal with them.